You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Investors break for a great fall in China. Not the Great Wall, a great fall. What's going on there? If you follow any kind of international business, you will know that China is Evergrande, real estate property development, holder, builder, you name it, massive company is probably going to default on just a smidge of debt this coming week. And that's not going to be good. It's, uh, it's, it's not looking good. Too big to fail? Well, we've been through that one. Not really. Ask, ask anybody who worked at Washington Mutual here in the state of Washington. How did that work out? Mm, not good. So we've got, we got investors bracing for a great fall in China. Could that have some major implications to the marketplace? Yes, it could, because we're going to find out there's a couple of big, big players in the United States market that might have invested just a smidge in Evergrande as well. That's what we're talking about today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies right here in Seattle, Washington, and I read the news. That's what we're doing. Some might say that my perspective as a real estate guy gives it a little bit more reasonable factor. I don't know. I don't always think so. I just think I, I'm normal and I look around and everybody else is just off their rocker. Just everybody else is crazy. It's not, it's not me. It's never me. Not in my backyard, right? I mean, just not me. Everybody else is nuts. And then I read the news and people seem to enjoy it. All right, let's go. London. It's from London. This is a Reuters article. It's got to be true. Just loaded with truths. International investors that have been piling into China in recent years, they are now bracing for one of its great falls as the troubles of over-indebted property giant China's Evergrande came to a head. Uh-oh. The, developer, the developer's woes have been snowballing since May. Dwindling resources set against 2 trillion won about 305 billion US dollars of liabilities. They got $305 billion of liabilities have wiped nearly 80% of its stock and bond prices and an $80 million bond coupon payment now looms next week. They got 305 billion in liabilities. Man, that is just one enormous Ponzi scheme. That's what it seems like to me. How how, how was this allowed to go on like this? I mean, they've got to come up with just more cash to make that go. And if they don't, which is what we're talking about here, mm, that's a hard no-go. It's got an $80 million bond coupon payment that's coming up this week. This article says next week. But as time goes on, you know, you get the drill. So what happens then is unclear. Bankers have said it will most likely miss the payment and go into kind of a suspended animation where authorities step in and sell some of its assets, but it could easily get messy. We'll have to see what happens. I mean, if you don't really know what's going to happen, then you know what you do? You say something along the lines of, we'll just have to see what happens, said Sid Dehaya, head of the EM corporate bonds at some company, Aberdeen Standard in London, which holds a small sliver of the bonds. They're probably working on a deal in the background, but we don't have any clarity and we don't really have any precedents. So it's uncharted water. Evergrande warned just over two weeks ago that it risked defaulting on its debt if it failed to raise cash. Since then, it has said that no progress has been made with those efforts. And analysts say the bigger picture is that of Evergrande, uh, which has more than 1,300 real estate projects in over 280 cities. If it does topple, it will firmly dispel the idea that some Chinese firms are too big to fail. Nothing is too big to fail. It's just not. I mean, we learned that during the Great Recession, right? It's like, Lehman Brothers, uh, they'll never, oh, ouch, not good. Wow, that one, huh, just the big short. It would probably still apply to big state-linked firms, of course. You're going to have the state back, you know, Chinese uh, government basically step in. But it comes to, uh, it comes after Beijing's clampdowns on big tech firms like Alibaba and Tencent wiped nearly a trillion dollars off its markets earlier in the year. Hmm, not good. Contagion from Evergrande has largely been confined to China's other highly indebted high yield firms, real estate developers, which have also slumped. But Hong Kong's heavyweight 
Hang Seng also hit a 10 month low on Thursday, showing there is some spread from one company to the other kind of within that industry, right? There are some big name global funds involved too. Emacs data shows that Amundi, Europe's largest and uh, asset manager was the largest overall holder of Evergrande's international bonds. Although it says it sold most of it before things turned really ugly. Amundi's co head of EM corporate and EM high yield, uh, Colm de, de Rosario described the fundamental picture for many Chinese firms as intact. For now, however, we await the commencement of a restructuring process of Evergrande to gather more information. So looking like a little bit of bankruptcy, right? I mean, just just a hair there. Not things not going well. Back in April, Evergrande's bonds were trading around 90 cents on the dollar. Now they are closer to 25 cents. Mm. We're sounding like a little bit of junk here, right? It's always priced as a risky high yield investment. But what prices are telling you today is that there was some surprise that the government would let it go fully, said the head of emerging market debt at US funded Aegean Asset Management, Jeff Grills. All right, he added, it's been a textbook example where investors have been lured in by the 10% plus interest rate the bonds had provided. If it's too good to be true, it might be. All right, they're giving me a really big return. What could go wrong here? Oh, you could lose all your money. I mean, that's the bottom line, right? Any investment, big return, big risk. Mm, yeah, roll those dice, see what happens. According to the letter Evergrande sent to the Chinese government late last year, its liabilities involve more than 128 banks and over 120 other types of institutions. So that's why we're doing this podcast. This could have some far reaching implications. Will it? We're just going to have to wait to find out, right? I'm, I'm just going to go with that statement. No, I think it will. I think you're going to hear this story more and more. Because this I have I have followed this story kind of as a, oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, that's that's not that's not going in the right direction for big company in China. But I didn't realize the extent of what some of the US companies here had invested and it's some significant money. So if this goes sideways, it's going to have some real impact, it's going to have some impacts probably on the markets right? I mean, is this going to have that trickle down effect? I would guess so. A group of Evergrande bondholders has selected investment bank Mollis and Co and law firm Kirkland and Ellis as advisors on a potential restructuring of a tranche of bonds, two sources close to the matter said. Other funds also exposed to the bonds include the world's biggest asset manager. Here you go. BlackRock. Hmm, interesting. As well as dozens more such as Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, and Asset Management, and PIMCO. Those are some pretty big players in the United States market, right? Yeah, they are. BlackRock. That is not surprising, is it? Major US financial firms include BlackRock and Goldman and the likes of Blackstone. And they are due to meet with officials from China's central bank and its banking and securities regulators later on Thursday. Do you smell bailout? Hmm. Debt analysts hope that the damage might not be too widespread. Let's go with that. The holdings are tiny compared to those big investment firms overall size. Also, only 6.75 billion of nearly 20 billion of Evergrande debt are included on JP Morgan's CM Sum Index, which big emerging market corporate debt buyers use as a kind of shopping list. All right. So less than half uh, of the debt is on um, this kind of index. All right, but there's still some pretty big exposure, right? Others are still wary, though, of the wider signal it sends. This is part of a self reinforcing dynamic in which rising insolvency risk sets off financial distress costs, which in turn increase insolvency risk. If somebody goes sideways, and kind of that story just goes out into the marketplace. All right, and then other companies get hard hit, they can't refinance, they can't do their thing, they can't raise capital. And then you've got an issue. You need a big box of tissues for all of your issues. So until regulators step in and incredibly address insolvency risk across the board, conditions are likely only to deteriorate. 
Mm, not good. Some veteran emerging market crisis watchers also think the troubles still have further to run. This unwind hasn't even really started, said Hans Humes of EM debt focused hedge fund Craylock Capital. That's kind of what I think. That's I think we haven't even begun this one yet. I think we are at uh, the starting line. Maybe we're waiting for that gun to go off. And um, it's going to and Thank you to everybody that has sent me this link. I've had a, a number of you and this is one of those ones because we are actually a we're a real estate podcast here. So we're talking about real estate. I'm going to jump to a more practical article that kind of analyzes. All right. So we've got this massive company in China. It's going eh, it's going a little sideways. And uh, what impact does that actually have in the marketplace? to the folks that uh, they're building stuff for this company, right? This is one of those, I like to do things on real applications. So we're not just talking about oh, bond price, and uh, you know, we're going to extrapolate this tranche and oh, you know, that kind of stuff too. How's it impact the, the people that are the actual underlying part of the story? As China's property giant Evergrande veers towards collapse, it's unpaid debts spark protests. So this is this is literally going on. In um, in China, they uh, Shenzhen, uh, China, if I uh, mispronounce that if I mispronounce any of these Chinese words, apologies, my Chinese uh, is truly non existent. So they came from all over the country, dragging cheap suitcases and clutching file folders filled with records, chanting in front of the glassy skyscraper, Evergrande, pay up. That's a that's a that's a chant right there. Evergrande, pay up. How do you get that one going? Evergrande, pay up. Maybe like that, but probably in Chinese, right? So there were owners of small lighting and plumbing and construction materials companies, suppliers for Evergrande. One of Chinese uh, China's largest property developers now staggering under more than three hundred billion in debt and facing potential collapse. Dozens of protesters were gathering daily here in recent days at Evergrande headquarters. Most were contractors who had accepted commercial papers, a sort of IOU, as payment for its projects, but now found Evergrande unable to pay when those IOUs came due. They say here, so these are the protesters saying, this is what this is what Evergrande is saying. We have no money, do whatever you like, said Lee Gexon, the manager of a janitorial company in uh, Qingdao. It had 200 workers who'd cleaned Evergrande sales offices for a year and were owed more than $300,000 in commercial papers. That is now essentially worthless if this thing goes sideways the way that it kind of looks like it will. If we don't get the money, we can't eat, said Lee who driven for 24 hours to the Shenzhen headquarters. They needed that money to feed their families, send kids to school, buy medicine for elderly people, and pay their own mortgage. They, they just need to pay for life, right? This is their job. We're cleaning your sales offices for a year. Because you got a big contract like that, a big company. You look at that big company as a small business owner, and you go, there's no way they're going to default on this. They're going to pay us. They've just got some cash flow issues until they don't, and they're in bankruptcy, and then it's more. And I'm not sure how the Chinese equivalent of this goes, but it can't be that much different than the United States. Um, so they're, they're look, these, these small independent contractors, they're looking to pay their own mortgages, to live. Dozens of other suppliers gathered around relating similar woes. Legions of police bearing riot shields stood nearby. Some walked through the crowds with banners that read, gathering evidence, and took photos of each person's faces. Oof, hard no go on that. What are you doing? Taking a picture of my face because you're at a protest. Mm. The distress surrounding Evergrande's crash is a window into the problem of bad debt in China's housing sector. Property giants like Evergrande have boomed in the last few decades on a model of vast borrowing and fast expansion, relying on cash flows from apartments it would someday build to construct apartments it had already sold. Yeah, crazy, right? I mean, this literally does feel the more I read about this, it feels like a Ponzi scheme, you just need to bring in more cash to make it go. 
and you can you can grow yourself really big. But if that one little piece where you get your next inflow of cash doesn't come, yeah, not good. That worked as long as they could keep getting new loans for new projects, even as housing demand declined. But in August of 2020, government regulators laid down new rules about how much debt developers could take on. Oh, we need to take on more debt. No, yeah, no. New law, no more debt. But we've only taken on 300 billion so far. What could possibly go wrong here? After a year of struggling to reduce its liabilities amid declining sales, Evergrande admitted in public statements this month that it may not be able to repay its debts. Hmm. Credit rating agencies Fitch, Moody's, and S&P downgraded Evergrande to levels indicating in or very near default. Its stock value has dropped 80% this year. And it has an estimated 1.4 million more homes that it's already sold, but not yet built. Mm. So they've got 1.4 million pre-sales. How many deposits have they taken on that? How many earnest monies? And again, I have no idea how the Chinese real estate market works. But if you had 1.4 million homes here in the United States, and you've got the cash flow where you can't build them out, Ooh, ah, not a good look for a real estate company. Not a good look. Let's just put it that way. Although the government is likely to step in to limit the fallout, it's kind of what I'm thinking. It's like, ah, you got a bailout coming at some point here. Evergrande's collapse would be the biggest test that China's financial system has faced in years. It would hurt not only the developers, creditors, and investors, but also all those who bought unfinished homes, put their savings in Evergrande's wealth management products, or were among its contractors and subcontractors paid in IOUs. That's what we're talking about here, right? It's the second article. So some of these suppliers have put up their own homes as collateral and loans to cover their work for Evergrande, confident that such a big company could not possibly fail to pay. Now they are under pressure from both the banks and their workers. This is no different than the Great Recession where you had folks who couldn't get out from underneath the debt of the homes they had purchased and in a declining market, things go sideways. And if you have very, very slim equity in the project, maybe none, maybe a little zero down action, which is always really, really popular until it's not, um, Now you've got a situation where this whole house of cards, mm, yeah, without a little government step in, maybe we're looking at that. I don't know. Is Evergrande, uh, is it big enough for the government to step in and and take over and do a little prop up action here until they can get squared away? I don't know. I don't know the Chinese market that well. But if we are covering it here in the US, because we've got some exposure to a bunch of our own companies that have invested and they've got bonds. I'm going to say that it's an issue. The entire construction supply chain had been using Evergrande's IOUs instead of cash for years, said Kai, a supplier from Wenzhou, who asked to be identified only by her last name. How do you spend an IOU? Is that liquid? It's not correct. But I mean, at some point in time, do they maybe make good on these IOUs? When Evergrande was late paying the July commercial papers, it sounds like they do pay them, but um, they initially, I mean, this is just a weird deal, right? But maybe it's not a weird deal because this is how you get there with $300 billion in debt with a B. That's, that's big. So when Evergrande was late paying the July commercial papers, she assumed that if the project she'd work on was in trouble, the company would be able to transfer money from another Evergrande project. I mean, all their projects can't be sideways, can they? Can they? Can they? Oh, they can. So we thought it couldn't be that all their projects in the whole country out of money, right? I mean, there's no way that's going to happen. It's not realistic, right? She said. But suddenly, no one wanted Evergrande's IOUs anymore. Well, that's because they had become worthless pieces of paper, she said. Then we panicked. 
Oh, how awful. I mean, you got your your family's well-being on the line. You're a contractor. Maybe you've owned this company for you know, a couple of generations in your family, whatever it is. You've got this massive IOU from a company. And without, a gov- without the government stepping in, some kind of bailout, you're not going to get paid. You're going to get a fraction of what you, in, in bankruptcy court or however it gets settled, you probably either won't get paid or you get a fraction of what you're owed. We would like to offer you three cents on the dollar. Will you take that? Oh, you won't? Okay. Well, yeah, you know, the next guy will. Good luck with that. So at the headquarters, police herded protesters toward a cafeteria on the fifth floor of a nearby building. There, Evergrande staff sat scattered at orange plastic tables labeled with the name of each province. Suppliers were encouraged to register their complaints with the staff then promised that they could receive Evergrande properties, unsold apartments, commercial storefronts, or parking spaces at a discount to offset what the company owed them. How is this going to work? We would like you to take a half-done project. Now, we know it needs millions of dollars to get that back up and completed. Might be some issues with some building permits there. We're not really sure, but we'd like you to take this in lieu of that IOU that we have out there with you. We don't want to default on that. Will you take this half done apartment complex? I mean, commercial storefronts or parking spaces? I would like to take a handful of parking spaces. Chen uh, Xiao Wang, the owner of a lighting company and electronics company in Wenzhou, sat at the Jiangxi province table. Evergrande's Xi'an branch owed him more than $200,000, he said. He had already had to lay off half his workers. The other day, the staff here told him that he could get parking spots in Xi'an. But when he called the office there, workers told him that they had not received instructions on that from their superiors. Well, doesn't surprise me. The company is you know, kind, of, kind of faltering and it's kind of buckling. You're going to have some lack of communication between higher up and lower down. A few hours later, he received a call from the local police in Wenzhou. He said, showing the times, the call records, they told him to go home and stop making trouble. <laughs> stop making trouble. You got you got to leave. You, you, you're making too much of a ruckus here. This isn't the right way to do things, Chen said. No, it's probably not. But unfortunately, with this one, this is how it's going to be. Outside, several women sat against the wall on suitcases and pieces of cardboard. They had been here for four days, staying in low-budget hostels and eating one bowl of noodles per day. That sounds horrible. Even if the parking spots in the shop spaces were real, one of the women said, no one wanted them. We need cash. We can't spend the uh, parking spots and shop spaces. Her name was Lee, and she'd supply decorative materials for Evergrande in the Anhu province. They owed her more than $1 million, she said. We have four parking parking spots from Evergrande already, Lee said. Another woman, a construction manager from Shandong, who asked that her name not be used, agreed. She was owed more than $300,000 and had dozens of migrant workers waiting for payment at home. How would you like to be in the middle of that? Not good. And those workers, I mean, they, they don't have any reserves, right? I owe this worker $1,500 and that worker $750. Should I give each of them a brick, a toilet, a room? They need cash. They need cash to pay their people, not a parking spot, not construction construction supplies. And analysts expect that Chinese authorities will move to limit the damage to the economy if Evergrande defaults. The potential for social and financial instability would be too high at a time when the Communist Party is preparing for Xi Jinping's transition to his third term next year. You need to keep things a little more stable. Having this, this could rock the markets. And um, yeah, they don't want that impact. So they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna probably smooth this over, right? The most likely end game is now a managed restructuring in which other developers take over Evergrande's uncompleted projects, the ones that they haven't given away in, a, <laughs> in an effort to try and get some payment. Uncompleted projects in exchange for a share of its land bank. And in which China's central bank steps in with liquidity support, home buyers would probably be prioritized in that scenario, he said. Probably. No guarantees. 
ah, you guys will, you know, you guys that bought homes and, and we we weren't able to finish, you're you're you're, pr- you're gonna be you're gonna be in the top quarter of the people making demands for all of our outstanding liabilities. Top quarter, we're, we're putting you right to the top. It's less clear what would happen to the people who came seeking their money in Shenzhen. They sacrificed one group of people in order to save the majority, said Yi Hong, 55, a clothing exporter from Ningbo, who had invested his retirement savings of nearly $800,000 in Evergrande's now frozen wealth management products. Again, not good. This is not going in the right direction, is it? All right, let's unfreeze those and let's get these people a little bit of cashola back. That's only going to happen with a bailout, right? Um, Yi had come to Shenzhen for the first time in his life, hoping to get his investment back. But after trying to negotiate, seeing the police everywhere, and hearing how much the others were owed, he wasn't hopeful. I just trusted them too much, he said. That always comes right after it's too big to fail, right? I mean, you just think, okay, how could how could this possibly go sideways? How could this possibly come back to bite me in the ass? Well, this is this is how that works. Company goes sideways. I mean, and this is a this is a publicly traded company, right? So we know what their liabilities are. Three hundred billion dollars. So everything works. And it just keeps going along, like in the Ponzi scheme, until it doesn't. And that's literally where we're at. I feel horrible for these folks who have been led to believe, "Eh, we'll just keep getting some commercial paper and take that in cash because they'll they'll eventually pay they're just a little slow until now and then people are just panicking, panicking. Because there's just, I mean, there, there's no way, obviously, the company right now, given its resources, can uh, keep pace with current obligations. Let's just put it that way. So it'll be interesting to see um, how big of a news story this is in the coming week. Will this will this rock markets? Probably. I mean, how big does a company need to be to fail? And then uh, yeah, if the Chinese government steps in and props it up then uh, that's a different story. But it kind of, that's a, uh, that's a precedent that you don't really want to be stepping into on a consistent basis. All right, how many companies are we going to prop up here? Which kind of leads to, all right, this market might be a little oversaturated. We might have some debt levels that are on the high side. On the high side. This will be an interesting one to follow. And I know a bunch of you out there have been following this. But yeah, sometimes you got to go international to figure out what it is that's going to impact you here locally. So bottom line is cash is king. Don't take IOUs from a company that might try and negotiate a parking space or an unfinished apartment complex. I will gladly pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today, right? That's kind of where we're at. Debt. Yep, there's good debt and there's bad debt. And then if you have way too much debt, mm, that can get away from you too. Any which way this this ends up going, I I almost almost guarantee you Chinese, the Chinese government's just going to step in. All right, we need need to do a little takeover here or whatever it is that they do. But we cannot have this going down right now. That's not a good look. We're not we're not dealing with that. All right. Who needs a bailout? That's where I think you'll uh, that's what I think you'll hear next. All right. That's it for me. Thanks so much for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I will certainly update you on this when uh, because this this isn't going away. Let's put it that way. This isn't this isn't going to have a happy ending. There's going to be some real chaos. It's what we do here. Bring you chaos and other stuff and interesting stuff. Oh, a uh, quick update before I go. I did last week a podcast of a uh, second floor edition being put on an RV of somebody living on the streets of Seattle. They're going to take that down. They're going to take down that that edition. And the quote was, uh, oh, man, I got to find that quote. It was it was it was expected. It was an expected quote. It, it wasn't shocking to me. 
but it had the F bomb in it. And the guy was really annoyed. And um, let's see, what was that? I don't know. But he was like, I'm taking the effing thing down. Because Como News was just hammering on him. Hey, what, what are you, you going to take that down? That Because the second floor edition, uh, it could easily topple over on one of the busier streets in the area of Ballard of Seattle. And that wouldn't be good for people walking by, cars going by, traffic, that whole thing. So there's an update to that. The homeowner of that uh, RV in Seattle with the second floor edition, He's, he is going to take it down. And what, what did he have up there? He had wicker furniture. You know what? I'm a no-go on the addition, but putting wicker furniture on the top of an RV that's pretty old, I'm, I'm all right with that. That's some good planning. That's some good thinking there. I'm okay with that part. Just the whole, Maybe you should make it just an outdoor space without you know all the framing and stuff and maybe just a little safety ledge so he could sit up there with his wicker furniture and Enjoy the sights and sounds of 8th Avenue Northwest in Seattle, which is a busy, busy street. All right, that's it for me on this one. We'll catch up with you soon. Until then, stay safe. We'll talk again. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out. 